Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Archbishop and Father Salvas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, God, danger, distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and everything within me bless his holy name. Through the intercession of the Theotokos, sing your sables. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all his rewards. As the sea as his tail doth, so dare so he must. The Lord prepared his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Through the intercession of the tail doth, save your sables. Glory to the Father and the Son. And the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Et iget in irini to give you the eighth of men. Ani la busos on eleis on je dia filax on imas. O Deus de si cariti. Tis penagia sagrando i per vloimeni sen doxu. Des pinisi monte o toku i kei parten Marias. Meta pandon ton agio mi monef sen desi aftu ke alilus ke pasan ti zoini mon Cristo to Deo para to meta. O ti son do Kratos, Jesu est in i Vasilia, che i dinami che i doxa, tu patros che tu iu che tu aiu pneumatos nin che ai, che i stus eonas ton eonon. Praise the Lord, O my soul, I shall praise the Lord while I live. I shall sing to my God as long as I exist. Save us, O Son of God, who rose from the dead. Save us who sing to you, Alleluia. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. His hope is...
Let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious holy Lady, Lady the Theotokos, and the Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Master and Lord our God, you've established in heaven the orders and hosts of angels and archangels to minister to your glory. Grant that holy angels may enter with us, that together we may serve and glorify your goodness. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Κατορθώματα εντυπηγή τη φλόγος 
ως επίδατος αναπαύσεως οι Άγιοι τρεις παιδες ηγάνοντο και ο προφήτης Δανήρ λέον τον ποιμήν ως προβάτον εδείκνητο εσ' αυτόν η και εσύ εσ Χριστέ ο Θεός σώσοντας ψυχάς ημών. Together please the hymn of our church and the conducion of the preparation for the nativity they are on page 3 of your bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Accept the thrice of the name also for the looks of this and visit us in your goodness. Forgive our voluntary and involuntary transgressions, sanctify our souls and bodies, and breath and our worship and serve and follow us on the days of our lives. By the intercession of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, 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 the
The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Wisdom. Brethren, by, a by faith Abraham sojourned in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God has foreseen something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Peace be to you, the reader. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. Glory to of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez and Zehar by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Aram, and Aram the father of Aminadab, and Aminadab the father of Nachshon, and Nachshon the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asa, and Asa the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amon, and Amon the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the <coughs> deportation of Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Salatiel, and Salatiel the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel the father of Abiud, and Abiud the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azor, 
and Azor the father of Zadok, and Zadok the father of Hakim, and Hakim the father of Eliud, and Eliud the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with the child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had borne a son, and he called his name Jesus. Glory to Good morning. Please be seated. And our church school students, all to the front over here, please. Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad to see you this morning. We have a really exciting Sunday here at Holy Trinity Church. Before I talk about that, I had a funeral the other day. And I know funerals can be kind of sad, right? But one of the, a wonderful thing happened after this funeral. So we usually have a luncheon afterwards. It's called a makaria, a blessed meal. And the son of one of the, the elders of this community who had passed away started telling stories about his father. And it was really neat because I got a chance to learn a lot more than what I knew even after all these years. And he was telling stories about where his father was born and he was telling stories about jokes that they used to play when they were younger and all sorts of fun things. And then he started, he also talked about his grandparents and great grandparents and started some telling stories about from where they were from in Greece. It was a really, really neat experience. Does anybody here know any stories about your parents when they were younger? Don't tell them, okay? But I just wanted to let you, ask you if you know. Do you know anything about your grandparents? Raise your hand if you know anything about your grandparents, like maybe where they were born, what, what they did. Okay, let's go. Great grandparents. Anybody know? the name of your great-grandfather or grandmother? You do? Really? That's awesome. What, what's the name of your great-grandfather or grandmother? William and Josephine. William and Josephine, cool. How about, how about, that's right, and I knew them too. All right, great, great, great. Anybody know great, great, great? How about great, 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 great? No. No, it gets really hard because what happens after all those years? What happens? Confusing. It gets? Confusing. And also what happens? We just... Huh? Forget. We forget. Yeah, that's right. So, today in the gospel reading, did anybody hear all those names? And what was the purpose of all that? 
we talked about all those names that led up to the birth of, of who? Jesus. And we went way, way back in what's called a genealogy, which is like a family tree. So we would know where Jesus came from, where he went when, when he was born on earth. So guess what? You're going to, and then by the way, the end of the gospel talked about the story of the birth of Jesus. Well, in the funeral at the Macaria, we told, there were stories told so we wouldn't forget, right? In the gospel today, there was a story told so we wouldn't forget. What big story are you telling today, and how are you telling it? What big story are all of you getting together today? And what story are you telling? The nativity. The, you are talking about the nativity today. You're telling a big story. And that story is not just a story. It is the good news of salvation. Question, why are you doing this besides your parents are asking you to do it, your teachers are asking you to do it, and everybody's really excited for you to do it. Why do you come every year and do the Christmas pageant? Why do we do? Why do we do it? So we can remember the story of Jesus? Absolutely. So we remember, so it's the opposite, so we don't forget. You said sometimes after you get back so far, you forget, right? We're never supposed to forget this story, ever, 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 because it's not just the story of the generations before us. It's our story. And who else's story is it? Who else's story besides us? Jesus's. It's Jesus's story for everybody and all the generations to come as well. So we never, ever forget it. There are some really good Bible passages to help us remind us why we should keep telling this story. One is so we should be thankful. In Psalm 26, 7, it says, Sing a song of thanksgiving, telling all of your wondrous deeds. They're talking about the wondrous deeds of God. So we should continue to tell the story because we're so thankful for what Jesus did for us. Another one in Psalms, it says that we should do this just to praise God. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever. Everybody throughout the world, throughout all times, that's what this good news is all about. Also, what about you all? What about you who are members of the body of Christ, which means you are part of the kingdom of God on earth and you are chosen by God and saved by him? In Psalm 107, it says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. You are telling the story. And guess what? The story of Jesus and his nativity is a part of the story of your life because you would not have a church, you would not have a faith, you would not be preparing to enter the kingdom of God yourselves if it wasn't for that story. Jesus himself says, go out and tell. Go tell the story. Uh, when he healed uh, a man who was possessed, he says to him afterwards, declare how much God has done for you. That's in the Gospel of Luke. So Jesus says, likewise, don't put your light under a bushel, but let it shine before men. And Jesus is the light of all of our lives. So we let his story shine before us. In the book of Acts, as, and by the way, this is at the spot of the ascension, and we were there. All of us that were in the pilgrimage recently when we went to Jerusalem and the Holy Land, we stood at the place. Jesus' last place on earth that he stood before he was lifted up and carried up into heaven. And he says to the ones that are gathered around him, his disciples and followers, you will be my witnesses. That is you and you and you and you and you. You are all Jesus' witnesses today because you are telling the story about how he miraculously came to earth, took on flesh, and became our savior. And finally, finally, Jesus says, I really want young people to tell the story, not just the priests and not just the scholars and the bishops. I want my children to tell the story because in Luke 19, all the uh, children were kind of gathered around, right? And, um, and he says, let the children come to me for such of such belongs the kingdom of heaven. 
And when the Pharisees were the wise men of the day, they weren't really, but they were the Jewish authorities of the day. They weren't wise in Jesus' eyes for sure. They said, hey, keep these people quiet. He said, if they don't, if they're silent, then the very stones around you will cry out. So that is what you are doing today. You are telling the story, the best story ever. Our theme this year is the star of Bethlehem, and the star led the wise men, and the star is going to lead us to that truth today. I am very excited to have you tell that story. Father Radu and I and Father George will be sitting up there in front, smiling and waiting and excited to hear what you have to tell because you are telling the story, the good news. Something has, you have something important to say. Yes. The Star of Bethlehem is my brother's song. It is. You're just going to sing that. Very nice. Yes, yes, sweetheart. Jesus born in a ma in a in a stable or a cave. Jesus, the, Jesus was born in a cave, and we visited that cave when we were in Jerusalem today. But it's also called a manger because it's where the animals were kept, and so it's uh, a little gets a little bit confusing with translation sometimes. But there it is. So how about this? Look up, and there's the story in an icon. You are the living icons telling the story today. How about that? I know we're gonna have some fun. We always do, Pres Becky always helps put together some really fun introduction and we involve all of you with some really great characters and stories. But what does it always end with? After all the stories, what does it always come down to? The birth of Jesus Christ. And I'm so happy to have you here to celebrate it with us today. I will be more happy to see you here over the coming weekend when we celebrate the actual feast. And I hope that you are gonna to talk to your parents and tell them and ask them, you don't tell them, you ask them, mom and dad, we should be in Christmas, we should be in church on Christmas morning because no matter what gift I open, none of them will be as good as the gift that Jesus gives us in Holy Communion. So if you tell them how important it is to you, maybe they'll do that for you. We have service Christmas Eve, we also have service Christmas morning. Let's open the best gift first, and let's continue to always tell the story of our salvation in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great pageant today. I'm really excited to see it. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages.
having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only Son, the one who venerate your cross of Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God, we know none other than you, we call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ, for the hope of the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing, Lord, let us praise his resurrection for enduring the cross for us. He has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on you, O God, according to your great mercy, according to the multitude of generations. Against you, you will not by sin, and not just as you will never cite me to come, justify me to speak in the language of the earth. People that have brought forth the new creation, and not just as you will never cite me to come. You shall make me a sign of the Lord, and I will not be able to do it. Turn your face away from my sins, and blood on my knees, create in me a clean heart of God, and renew my spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, do not take your Holy Spirit from me, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Să vă pomenească Domnul Dumnezeu într un părăția sa, totdeauna acum și pururea și în vecii vecilor. Amin. May the Lord God remember us all in His kingdom, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages.
Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. Let us O Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For a Christian and to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from, from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you. That your good and gracious spirit may abide with us with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Peace be with all. Let us love one another, that with oneness of mind we may confess. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. the doors in wisdom let us be attentive i believe in one god father almighty creator of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and in one lord jesus christ the only begotten son of god begotten of the father before all ages light of light true god of true god begotten not created of one essence with the father through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation and came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, is spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the ages to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in all, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right. It is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, to thank you, to praise you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God ineffable beyond comprehension, invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things, we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit for all things we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out, and saying, Blessed powers, merciful master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You, <clears throat> you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broken, gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remember, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. The Saikon Son Si Prosperomen, Katapanda Kediapanda. Please bow your heads until the end of the next hymn. Once again, we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood, and we ask, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts here presented. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. O Theos, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ, Amen. and that which is in this cup the precious blood of your Christ, Amen. changing them by your Holy Spirit, Amen. 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 So that they may be to those who partake of them for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of the Can we offer you the spiritual worship for those who are opposed in the faith, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, and saints?
and John Never Virgin Mary. It is truly right to call you blessed. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Silas. Grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace. Keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name, of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The merciful, great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts often consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. That our loving God, who has received them at his holy, heavenly, spiritual altar, as an offering of spiritual fragments, may return and upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord have mercy. Have been prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit. Let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and help and ask, we pray and entreat. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, O in his El Tetu y Vasiliasu, Yenidito to Telimasu, O send one an oke epitizis, Donat Limon to Nebusion, Dosimin Simeron, Giap Semita of Limataimon. Os que me safirmen de Filete Simón, que me sinem de Massa Espirasmón, a la Isa e Massa Puta Pondiru. O ti, su estini vacilia, que é dinamis que é doxa, tu patroz, que tu é o 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 Let us bow our heads unto the Lord. To you, O Lord. We give 
thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you have created all things, and by your great mercy you have brought everything from nothing into being. <clears throat> Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick, the physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy good and life-creating Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Oh. Lord Jesus Christ, your God, hear us from your holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us. Let your pure body and your precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. God be merciful to us. God be merciful to us. Let us be attentive, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. The Lamb of God is broken, the distributor broken, but not divided. He is for every man who will consume, but he sanctifies those who partake of him. Blessed is the fervor of your saints, always known over the ages of ages. Amen. 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 I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins, and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, whom unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in Him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas. But as the thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our immortal King and God. <laughs>
Christ, for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please forgive me the unworthy assistance. praise his resurrection for enduring the cross for us he's destroyed death As we bring forth the holy gifts of the body and blood of Christ, we invite all who are Orthodox Christians who have properly prepared to receive these holy gifts to come forward. We ask you to do that in good order, especially today with this full house and with all of our young people so excited to get ready to do the pageant today. There is no adult sermon today because the young people with the pageant are delivering the sermon, which is, of course, the best message of all, the nativity and the salvation of Jesus Christ. So, as usual, we ask to this chalice, only the staff first, so that they may go and be there and ready for their children. And after that, everyone from the center aisle, first round, all of the children. Please let them go first. They are very excited to get out there and get ready today. So all the young people of the church school first, then the parish council will go back again on a second pass and we'll deliver every, and we'll uh, dismiss everyone else. May God have mercy on us and bless us. God bless you. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near.
God save your people and bless your inheritance. Wash away, O Lord, by your holy blood the sins of those who are created. With your intercessions, the holy blood of your Son, the Virgin Mary, and the holy saints. Be exalted, a God above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, a God above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, a God above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine calling, pure immortal, heavenly life giving, and awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worldly give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, and mercy upon us, and protect us, O oh God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Have been prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day. Let us commit <laughs> ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ, our God. Thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path. Establish us firmly in your fear. Guard our lives and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Father, give the blessing. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power. And do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of light. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord in his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love. 
always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. <clears throat> glory to Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God. Through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable, bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy, glorious, prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy victorious martyrs of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, our righteous father Michael Singelon, the confessor, and Saint Sebastian, the martyr and his companions, whose memories we celebrate this day, our father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose memory, whose divine liturgy we have celebrated, and of all the saints. Via fondona iun pateron imon kiria isu Christeo theo seleison ke sosonimas. And may the Holy Trinity bless and protect all of you. Good morning. Please be seated. Our parish council will come forward with the offering tray. Thank you for the offerings that you're able to make for the ministries of Holy Trinity Church. If you do not have cash on you to place in the tray. Remember, we have our kiosk that is in the narthex. You can simply walk out and swipe on your way in or out. And also, you may see our new Realm platform for giving by text, uh, web, or by the Realm app. Well, a few announcements today. It is a really exciting Sunday around here. There is a lot going on, number one of which is the Christmas pageant. This is our annual proclamation of the story of salvation, Jesus Christ, as I talked to the children this morning about it. And our theme this year is the Star of Bethlehem. Um, I'm not sure how many of you, especially maybe that are newer to the community who have not grown up with this, realize just how special the Christmas pageants here are at Holy Trinity Church. Some churches, only have a couple of their kids and they just do the scene in the, in the, in the manger and the cave and, and so forth and the wise men and that's it. We do not only that but a whole story wrapped around it and it kind of engages a lot of the kids in some exciting uh, narratives. Also, every single student in the Holy Trinity Church School is invited to participate in the pageant. So everybody has a part. Somewhere, if you've got a child or a grandchild, niece, nephew, whatever, and they're at this church, they have a part, or at least they've been invited to. And so we've got, who knows, probably over 90 kids in this show today. Uh, also, some churches go out, and they go online, or they go to a Christian bookstore, and they buy a canned Christmas pageant. Not here. Every pageant that you've ever seen at Holy Trinity Church in the last 30 years has been custom written for this parish. We engage some elements of parish life, and maybe some of the stories and the people involved with it. But uh, that is due to Presbyter Becky and her wonderful dedication towards, the, uh, towards these children and also our staff who work so hard on it. And we've got a lot more this year. We also have, we've been growing in our musical offerings. So you're going to see not only the hymns and the carols that the children sing, but there's instruments that our, our Christmas uh, orchestra will be playing. These are all of our children. And every one of them is just absolutely beautiful and they're offering these talents to the glory of God. So. Uh, please, everybody, go to the gallery afterwards. The, the hospitality hour is being sponsored by our church school alumni families. So this is a tradition that all of the students that have graduated are now in college. So those for the next four years after you graduate, the parents come back and put on the hospitality hour for the pageant. So that is a really nice offering today. Uh, also, the Goya has its Christmas bread available. Uh, they do this as a service to the community. Of course, it's a fundraiser for Goya. But I got to tell you, you were amazing this year, and so were they. Over 450 loaves of Christmas bread that our Goyans did over the past few days. Sadly, they sold all of the ones that have been pre-sold, and there are no extras. So if you didn't order, let that be a lesson next year. Get serious about putting your orders in ahead of time. But if you did have a pre-order, please go into the gallery, and there's racks there, and there are names with your names and your orders attached to it and see the Goyans, or the parents probably, that are there taking care of that. Uh, coming up this week, we have only on Monday night our Journey to Fullness. It is the last of our series of uh, Orthodoxy introduction. And this Wednesday, 
everybody, everybody is invited to come and join in the Christmas caroling. So one of the wonderful community outreach services we do is we go across the street, usually the Wednesday before or so of Christmas, and we go to the Sisters of Divine Providence. Remember that we bought this property essentially from them. We bought it from LaRoche, but they own LaRoche. So it's a really wonderful outreach. They love it. This, they are retired Roman Catholic nuns, and they get really excited for us to come over. So uh, it's not just for the children, it's for parents as well. When was the last time you went Christmas caroling? Let me ask you that. I mean, it's really, really fun. And again, you bring a lot of joy to these old women who have served the Lord all their life. So um, please, 6.30, we meet here in the gallery, do a little practice, and then we go over there. And we take them some uh, gifts with us as well. Services for the Nativity of Christ. Please pay attention to the bulletin. There was an error in the Herald, so scratch that. I sent out a notice yesterday online. This is also correct. So Friday morning, we have the Royal Hours at 8.30. Saturday morning, we have the Orthros and Liturgy of the Four Feast. That would normally be done Christmas Eve, but we can't because it's a Saturday night. So in the morning, there will be Divine Liturgy. That means communion. Then Christmas Eve, a Vesper service with our choir with some, again, original offerings of music, thanks to Steve and Eleni, who have prepared the choir so well. Steve actually has now done another original composition for us. You remember that he's been doing these for the past few years. We're so thankful for all of them. So that's Christmas Eve, the service, followed by the, the, uh, the Christmas concert by the choir. And then on Christmas morning, we have Orthros at 8.15, at 15 and 8.30, actually, Divine Liturgy at 9.30 uh, for Christmas. And again, as I shared with the children, you want to set their priorities straight? You want to, or do you want to complain about commercialism and how, how crass Christmas has become? No. How about setting them in church Christmas morning and say, children, this is what Christmas is all about. Whatever else everybody tells you in all the sales and the commercials, this is what Christmas is all about. This is our priority. We will be here together first. Because the best gift you will open is the first gift, which is the body and blood of Christ given to you by our Lord. So... Sorry, but a few other things. I'm actually stalling to give the kids time to get ready. Uh, so, in the bulletin in the Herald, you have seen uh, this, which is for the upcoming February Valentine's Breakfast. Argoya always holds, but it is one of our centennial events. So beginning on January 1st, we enter our 100th year, the centennial of Holy Trinity Church. And they are giving a theme to the event this year, which is honoring our roots. And so... There is a section on our website, holytrinitypgh.org slash roots. We want you to go on and just enter where are your roots. Maybe back in Greece, maybe in another country, maybe you don't even know from where, but you know that you, know, you were born here in Pittsburgh or somewhere around the area here or you moved in from it. We want to know where everybody comes from, and the Goyans are planning on putting up some displays and maps. And beyond that, if you can send some pictures, maybe you have a picture of your home village. We went to visit Presbyteras this summer and my, my family's and hers in Greece, and we've got some pictures of those. So if you have any pictures of your old family village or your old homestead here or wherever it is, send those, because we want to basically lay out the mosaic of what makes Holy Trinity Church as rich and beautiful and diverse as it is. So please, please, please do that. Other thing, this one came in the Herald as well. It is the, we need your Holy Trinity history photos. So maybe you have pictures in your drawer or in your albums or, or digitally of your Yaya's and Papu's wedding or yours or a baptism or a picnic or a whatever it might be, some, a dance or something in the life of Holy Trinity Church, specifically involving your family, hopefully. So if you could email that to uh, centennial at holytrinitypgh.org. We're collecting those to use throughout the year because the, we had a really uh, good centennial committee meeting yesterday, and we are celebrating not just one day or one weekend. We are celebrating 100 years all year long. And so some of these, event, these uh, resources that you provide are going to be used for that. <coughs> Last, is Mike Curtiotis or Charlie? Mike's going to come up or Charlie? Who's coming, who's coming up today? Mike or Charlie, I don't know. Or George? Oh, George Mellis, I'm sorry. George Mellis. There he is. Uh, why don't you both come up? You're both doing the work. All right. So
So it is our Stewardship Sunday where we are collecting our stewardship offerings, and we're going to ask Mike and George to offer their comments about that and their encouragement, and we're going to offer a blessing. I guess we have a little bit of a uh, disconnect. We didn't really plan anything except that we wanted to say thank you for all the years of your donations. The 100 years, as Father said, and this church is really still growing. I mean, we don't feel like we're 100 years old. <laughs> we feel like we're just starting, right? So, I mean, you can see already we have a lot of work getting done, and more work will still be done uh, with your help. So today, uh, we've done this before once, and I think it's a good idea. It's not just to um, collect cards and just put it into the accounting system, but it's also just to say thank you that all your donations and your pledges are received, um, and our heartfelt thanks for keeping this church going, because it is, this church is running because of you. We don't get anything from anyone except from within. All your work is the one that makes us uh, open these doors every day. So uh, thank you, and we wanted to just bring all the pledges and your um, contributions today together and have Father bless our donations and the year that's starting out so well Tracy. and so exciting, as he said. So um, thanks again. Yeah, just to reiterate, Mike's thank you. Um, the, you know, this community has done a terrific job in, in 2022 in keeping up, pledging with stewardship, keeping up with your pledges, completing your pledges. Uh, but we have a lot of work to do moving forward, so we want 2023, as Mike said, the centennial year, um, to really kind of you know, raise the roof on our stewardship and, and, and um, you know, continue the trajectory forward so that um, we get everyone involved in the stewardship program. We've had you know, kind of slight dips ever since the pandemic as far as the number of stewards, so we want to get that back up to the levels of 2019 and, and even higher. Uh, and so, um, again, thank you all, and um, remember that now we have, we're moving into the 21st century. We have a lot more capabilities online, including pledging now, so please take advantage of that. Thank you. And today, today is not the end. If you haven't pledged, don't feel like you're done, you know, or that, you, you know, it, it's not, you don't count. Pledge anytime you can. Uh, today is just an official start, but not the end of the pledging. Uh, so, I'm stalling for just a few more seconds as they finish getting ready. So, Mike or George, can you answer the questions that people ask? Do I need to put a pledge card in every year or a pledge in every year? Yeah, absolutely. A resounding yes. <laughs> Everybody says, you know, I, I, I get the envelopes. I give you money. Uh, I don't see my name in the, uh, in the directory, you know, under the pledge, under the membership. You know the one that we have in the, in the Herald every so often that says, you know, I'm a... I'm a steward. That's when you actually submit your pledge. A pledge is the beginning of your, of your, of your, you know, uh, responsibility and your honor to be a part of this church. So whether you give a hundred thousand or a hundred dollars doesn't matter to us. It's what you can. But the pledge is what you when you say I commit to this church for this year. So it's so important to have the pledge card, and also it, you you become an official member a voting member sac for, for um, any of your sacraments that we have in the church, the pledge is the one that really counts as the first step towards your membership. So, yes. And, and one last question, and that is, everybody look up. The scaffolding's down, but look what happened to our iconography. So, in a little bit more than a month, George Cordes and his team will be coming to fix that and to also complete all the iconography in the church. Uh, thank you, Jimmy, for coming up. Jimmy. How are we going to pay for this? <laughs> well, we're going to pay for this by the grace of God and everyone stays healthy, number one. So one, I, I just want to say thank you for what you've done so far. Um, Ten years ago, we opened the doors of this church thanks to the, the grace of everyone's, uh, you know, offerings and hard work. Um, so we're going to complete the church and uh, finish the iconography, fix the roof finally, and uh, complete the, the project. So. We have pledges right now of about $500,000, give or take a little bit. We've collected about $340,000 as of today. But we need your help. Um, the end of the year is coming up. Um, a lot of people have made a three-year commitment. 20, um, 
20, 2021, 20, 22, and 23. Um, as the iconographers show up in, in January and the woodworking starts showing up, we have to pay for that. So uh, I'm asking if you could um, complete your 22 pledge, if you can do your 23 pledge this year and take the tax deduction, that would be great. If you can do it early part of next year, um, we're going to have some large payments coming due here in March, April, and May, as the iconographer will be here from the beginning of January um, till the end of March, um, give or take. And then what we'll do is you'll start seeing uh, the woodworking stuff start showing up here in the middle of the summertime. But we're obligated to pay that. Um, the cash flow looks good right now. As uh, George was saying, uh, we want to get back to the 2019 levels. And really what we want to get to is that we're a self-sustaining church, that we pay our bills from our goodwill offerings, and that we don't depend on the festival. Right? We've been blessed that we've been able to pay for this church. There's no debt on this church right now. Um, we're going to complete this project. There will be no debt on this project. And we would hope that people would just continue that level of giving so that we can erase the deficit that we have every year from an operating perspective. Basically, the doors stay open because of the festival. If we didn't have the festival, we'd probably have a hole in the budget of about $180,000. So what the hope is, we complete this project, but the money that you were given to the project goes into your stewardship so that in the hundredth year of Holy Trinity, we can then take the monies that we have from the festival and do outreach and send our children to different programs and help other people. So that is the goal. We're going to complete this church. It is a building that is great. But more importantly, as we move the, the parish forward in terms of self-sustaining and being able to do what we said we were going to do when we moved to the North Hills, and that's able to give back to the communities that we serve. So we appreciate that. Thank you, George and Mike and Jim. Here, stay there for a second, and let's have George Dickus come up and uh, please rise. And he is bringing our offerings, which they will represent all the pledges you have made in cards, online, and all of your gifts. And remember. It's really not about the money. It's about sharing the first fruits of our blessings with the Lord so that his name may be glorified. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. O Master and Lord our God, who have commanded that we bring unto you an offering of each of our own things, who requites the same with the gift of your eternal good things, who did graciously accept the offering of the widow according to her ability. Accept now these offerings and our pledges which are offered to you by these your faithful servants and grant to place the same among your eternal treasures, granting unto us all an abundant harvest of your worldly benefits together with all those things profitable to us all. For blessed is your name and glorified is your kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. In a season when we all look for gifts to be given to us under the tree, thank you for giving your gifts to the Lord and his holy church. Be seated, please. Thank you. When I came this morning, I was really amazed. I saw the poinsettias, and I went inside, and I said, Father, Father, you don't have enough out there. Of course, I was joking. But later on in the liturgy, when we came out with the 18 of the altar boys, and of course the priests, and you in the congregation, I said to myself, now the decoration is completed. Because truly, Christmas is not the flowers. Christmas is the active life of the people who believe. And we saw that in action today from the youngest to the oldest member of this community. And those who gave some pep talk for the stewardship, please don't worry. This church is an active church, is a participating church, and is a giving and sharing church. And I congratulate you for that. 
I wish all of you have the merriest of the Christmas with health and prosperity. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Father George. Father George, you can stay there because you and Father Radu are going to offer the Andidaran today. And you may come forward. The children are anxiously awaiting for us in the grand room, so please go to the gallery and uh, receive those treats and then head into the grand room. Thank you. Thank you.